This is Frank at Korea, and this is a quick hit video on the Khalil Mack trade that I talked about earlier in the year, and how the Amari Cooper trade is a much better deal for both sides involved. So like and subscribe below, and comment if you don't agree, or just want to comment. Now, just to recap, I'm probably the only person in the world who thought the Khalil Mack trade was bad for Chicago, and great for Oakland, or whatever we're calling the Raiders these days. Because while a defensive end is a great thing, it's really not that great. And the guaranteed money uh, that is, well, guaranteed for, well, basically it's a three-year deal. I know it says six, but you're going to guarantee him for three, probably pay him a fourth, and then cut him after five and six to lose next year's one, the year after that one, and a couple of other good picks. Um, ultimately isn't worth it. The season ends today. Chicago would be in last place in the NFC North which means they would not be in the playoffs. And uh, while you are paying Trubisky absolutely nothing to be your quarterback, he's pretty average. Middle of the pack or worse in most of the major categories that uh, quarterbacks would look at. Yards per game, touchdown to interception ratio, interceptions, sacks, quarterback ranking. Now, yes, yesterday he played the Pats, and they didn't do so bad, but... Uh, yeah, statistically didn't do so bad, but a lot of that was on the last play of the game where he came up one yard short because he underthrew the ball. So why is the Amari Cooper trade, I feel, is a better trade for both sides involved? Let's go with Dallas. So yes, Dallas is trading next year's number one, and if the season ended today, that would be a top 10 pick. But yeah, they're not that far off. They're in the NFC East. They're game and a half behind Washington. They can definitely get better. They've got another win coming up against the Giants. Giants. And, well, let's face it. They needed a wide receiver. They didn't have a wide receiver, and now they have a wide receiver. He's also going into his fifth year. And because he's a first-round draft pick, they, the Dallas Cowboys, can sign what's called the fifth-year option. Now, this is why somebody who's drafted at the end of the first round really wants to be drafted at the beginning of the second round. Because this is a team-only option. It's guaranteed money. It's probably about $13 million, but it's not a franchise tag. You don't have to use it on them. And if you don't like them in that fifth year, eh, you don't have to pay a lot of money to guarantee a six or more. So that's why you see a lot of players who are in the first round, who have two really good first seasons, try to sign up that long curve deal in year three because they know they're not going to pay much in three a little bit more in four and then a fifth year deal that isn't great now for Dallas yes they're giving up their first round draft pick next year but this probably means that for Dex uh, Dex Prescott that again he's getting paid absolutely nothing as a third round draft pick it's only a four year deal he's got the rest of this year and next year to do they pay him nothing if he's not the answer, and if Cooper's not the answer, they didn't spend much, and they don't have to go out there and risk drafting a quarterback. So that takes drafting quarterback off the table. And they still might get a better quarterback out there. Because for Oakland, now they have three number one picks. So this season ended today, and again, they are, you know, probably going to get worse. The other teams may get better. They would be drafting third, tenth, and fifteenth overall next year. Now, why is that important? Because as that team goes into Vegas in 2020. Again, it's another lame duck season next year. So they have two picks in the 2020 draft already. Thank you, Chicago. But they may want to draft a quarterback. Now, unlike last year, there's not a ton of teams that need a quarterback. But there is one team that is possibly going to be worse than them, and that is the New York Giants. So now, because they have three number one picks, unless they are the worst team which they hit the jackpot. Or, unless the Giants are the worst team, they can trade up to get that number one pick. Because, let's say it ends up with the Giants' second worst and the Raiders with the third worst. Well, of the bottom ten teams, none of them need a quarterback. Let's say Buffalo ends up as the worst team in the league. Highly possible. They're not going to draft another quarterback. And, yeah, they could trade down one spot, with the Giants and probably get maybe the year after first or second, or a team with a brand-new rookie quarterback 
could trade with the Raiders, get the third number overall pick, and maybe get, what, the 15th overall pick? And get it cash money this year, maybe a little bit more. Oakland gets the pick that they want. Buffalo loads up on top talent and doesn't have to pay him much. Or insert your team there, whoever ends up in the worst. So now the Giants really have to be the worst team if they want to get uh, who I think is the best quarterback, uh, Hebert, out of uh, Oregon. Or they're going to be risking having to add another quarterback out there. Now you might be saying, well, why do I think Oakland needs a quarterback or whatever we're calling the Raiders? Because Carr is not the answer. At least that's what they're telling you. Because they didn't just trade away their best receiver in a year where they didn't have to pay much next year either. Well, $13 million is a lot, but not really. Carr may not be their answer. They may not want to spend $25 million to lock him up. So now they can go out there and get a quarterback, or they can restrictive franchise tag. It just means it's the average of the top 10 for a year, draft the quarterback, and then kind of do the the Rivers uh, 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 situation that he did in, in San Diego when San Diego also had Drew Brees. They could set that up. Or just say, screw it. We're drafting a quarterback. Carr's gone. Or you just have Carr starting for the one year, and you've got uh, you got your future behind him. like Kind of like what Kansas City did last year. They've got opportunities. They've got goals. And by 2020, they could be pretty much giving Vegas their first championship, since it doesn't look like the Vegas Knights are, at least right now, are championship bound. Like and subscribe, and... If you disagree with me, I'd like to think what you think, but uh, yeah, the Dallas and Oakland deal is a win-win, while the Chicago-Oakland deal was a win for the boys who won't be in Oakland and a loss for the boys who will still be stuck in Chi-Town.